In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to carry out path analysis in Amos um, using uh, multiple imputed data sets. So basically, um, multiple imputation refers to a strategy for dealing with missing data um, where it involves uh, estimating model parameters and imputing values based on uh, the model that you have specified. So when you have missing cases on individual uh, variables um, in your data set, you uh, are essentially generating uh, a new set of data sets uh, with complete data on those particular variables. So uh, if you want a, a further description of uh, the general strategy, you can uh, see example 30 from and 31 from uh, the Amos user's guide. So the variables that I have in this data set are actually derived from the American National Election Study from 2016. And uh, I have measures of economic and social conservative beliefs, a measure of income level, uh, self-identified uh, liberalism, conservatism, and then trust in the government. So uh, the data set actually looks like this, where I have um, those variables and a number of others. And uh, the 999s that you see are actually just the missing value codes so that uh, SPSS uh, and Amos would recognize um, uh, the 999 as, as reflecting missing values. So to carry out um, our analysis uh, you, with uh, missing data, since it, there's obviously missing data in there, uh, I'm just going to open up the, the, the data file. So I'm just going to go file name right here, and this is it right here. And uh, click on OK. And so now I've imported the data into the Amos program. Under Analysis Properties, if I just stick with clicking on Estimate Means and Intercepts and nothing else, then basically what will happen is that I will get um, a solution uh, based on full information maximum likelihood estimation. So that's one option in dealing with missing data is just to uh, estimate using the uh, full information uh, maximum likelihood method approach. Um, another option uh, that would ent entail imputation might be to go to uh, analyze data imputation and select re regression imputation. So that's another option. That just involves generating a single data set with complete data so that then you could run your analysis based off of that. And so I've actually discussed uh, uh, the uh, full information approach and regression imputation approaches in a, a previous video. So we're not really going to focus on those uh, in this video. So instead, what I want to do is I'm going to generate um, multiple uh, completed data sets using the Bayesian imputation option. And you'll see down here that it says um, number of completed data sets 10. Uh, in the Amos manual, uh, that, that was uh, discussed as a reasonable number of completed data sets to work from. And then I'm also going to select the multiple output files option. And then so once I've done that, then I'm going to uh, click on Impute. And so we essentially uh, the model is estimated using uh, uh, Bayesian estimation. <clears throat> and you can see that um, it essentially uh, kind of converges after about uh, 10,000 observations. We could increase that if we want, but I'm just going to go ahead and click on OK. And so now you'll see that um, a box pops up and it says the following completed data sets were created. So we have 10 of them. Uh, right here. So each one of them has a different name. It's essentially the name of the original file uh, with an underscore and then you can see C1, C2, C3, and so forth. So we have essentially uh, 10 SPSS data files that have been created. So now I'll click on OK and um, uh, uh, right here then I'll click off of this and so everything kind of goes back to normal. So the next step is to um, estimate the model in each of those samples and then essentially combine individual parameters. So one of the trickier things about all this, and it's actually discussed in uh, example 31 in the uh, Amos user's guide, but basically what you have to do is you have to generate an individual um, parameter estimate. So for instance, if, if we're talking about uh, the parameter estimate or the, the regression coefficient, linking social uh, conservative beliefs and uh, liberal conservative identification, you know, this path right here, then uh, what we would have to do is 
estimate the model uh, 10 times, obtain the standard errors for each of those and the individual path coefficients, and then combine that information into an overall test for that individual path. So there's a little bit of work involved, which um, we're oftentimes not used to with um, um, a lot of the automated structures in SEM programs. So basically what I ended up doing was uh, creating a little calculator uh, that would allow us to uh, organize the, uh, the uh, estimates for a given uh, coefficient and the standard errors and then essentially carry out the um, t-test uh, on, um, on the overall set of estimates. And so those, uh, that uh, calculator is based on the computations that are provided in the Amos manual for computing uh, the average um, parameter estimate and, uh, and, and, and the multiple group standard error. And um, in fact, uh, what I've, you know, the default in here right now, the way it's set up, uh, all of these values right here are actually the values that I used the, uh, that are presented uh, in this table on page uh, 487. And then the, uh, if you go through and look at the individual components, uh, you'll notice that those values are the same as those that appear for each part of um, the, um, for each uh, of the equations. So let's uh, go back to our original model. And I'm going to focus in on uh, the path co coefficient from social conservative beliefs to uh, liberal conservative uh, self-identification. And just to make things a little easier to identify, we're just going to click on object properties, go to parameters, and I'm just going to call this P1 uh, for short, just to give it a little bit of a name. So the next step is going to entail carrying out the analysis on each of our individual samples and putting the information uh, into our table, into our Excel file. So I'm going to go over here to select data, file name, and so now we can see we have all 10 of our, um, our, of our completed data sets. So I'm going to start with C1 right here, click on open, and OK, and then uh, run the analysis. When I go to my output file uh, and go to estimates, uh, you can see that uh, for our, um, let's, see, let's move this over a bit. So for our P1 variable, the estimate is 0.763, and our standard error <clears throat> is 0 0.022. So I'm going to type in 0 0.763 and then 0 0.022. All right, so then we can go to the next one. In fact, I can just go ahead and just delete all this just to keep it um, straight, uh, and it's going to fill in as we go along. So the next uh, step is going to be to go to uh, the file name, go to C2 right here, click on Open and on OK, rerun it, and uh, now when we look at our estimates for that, we got 0.752 and 022234. So I'm going to just type in... Uh, point, uh, 0.752 and then point oh two 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 and um, the um, 3, 4. Uh, you'll notice that uh, oftentimes um, if we don't keep the, the rounding uh, more precise then we could end up theoretically with all the standard errors being exactly the same. And we want to have more precision so um, so at any rate, I, I would kind of recommend uh, um, kind of rounding off it with a more precision than just maybe uh, three decimal places. Okay, so uh, now what I've done is I've, I've uh, went ahead and completed uh, adding in the individual uh, path coefficients and standard errors for each of the 10 uh, data sets. So um, as you can see right here, the average... Um, uh, parameter estimate or the average uh, path coefficient from uh, social conservative beliefs to liberal conservative identification was 0.755. And you can see down here that uh, we have the multiple group standard error that I've computed based off of uh, the information that you have right here. So the T value is uh, 29.386. Uh, the degrees of freedom is already computed based off of um, the uh, this is the formula right here. And again, this is coming from uh, the uh, Amos User's Guide. And the p-value, uh, it says uh, 9.43185E59. Uh, That's just uh, scientific notation. Uh, so essentially, our p-value is going to be less than 0 .001. Um, so that's basically how you do it. So it's, it's a bit of a pain uh, because it, this does involve 
uh, essentially, um, if you want to test each of the individual parameters within the model, uh, you'll have to do the same um, setup or, or some version of it for each individual uh, path coefficient within the model. Also, a couple of other things. Um, I named the P1 just to help me uh, identify it within the output, so it's not a, re a requirement or anything like that. I just wanted to provide a label for quick and easy reference uh, to identify the information. Uh, just when you're dealing with uh, so many numbers, it's easy to sort of lose sight of, of where, you, where you should be. The other thing that I want to bring up is that when you're doing the imputation, uh, it is important you'll, you, you have to have estimate means and intercepts uh, clicked. So um, if you choose not to do that, like just to kind of demonstrate what I'm talking about, I'll just click off of this and we'll just click on uh, data imputation uh, and set it up the same way. If I click on impute, I get a, uh, an error message that just says, hey, you've got to click on estimate means and intercepts. So uh, that is an important thing to note. Um, so if you get that error message, uh, that's a sure tell sign that you need to go in here and click on uh, this button right here uh, prior to carrying out the uh, imputations. So that uh, pretty well uh, concludes this particular video demonstration. Like I said, uh, there's a lot more detail in the Amos Users Guides uh, in the uh, discussions uh, around examples 30 and 31.